What's going on everybody in YouTube land? This is Dallas on a Saturday e evening. Just got back to the shop from the auction. Um, I had a plan to do a different kind of hangout tonight, but uh, I'm pretty beat. And I want to show you what I got today, so we'll just get right into this. Uh, I think I got some pretty cool stuff. So uh, we'll start out with some uh, railroad stuff. So uh, railroad cans, love these things, easy sells. Uh, this one's Missouri Pacific, kerosene can. Uh, I paid 10 bucks a piece for these cans. This one I think I'll get 30 to 40 dollars for. This one's kind of cool. It's a uh, older one. It's probably 1890s, 1900. It's for a furnace lamp in a uh, conductor's car. And this one is pretty cool. I think I'll get 85 to 90 dollars for it. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then we got this one here. This one is Pennsylvania. Down there. I'll be can make that out. Pennsylvania Railroad. Uh, watering can. Uh, this one's galvanized aluminum. I think I'll get uh, again thirty, forty dollars for it. Alright, what's this one? Missouri Pacific again. This is a smaller watering can. Cool shape. Kind of different. Again, I think I'll get the same type of money for it. Uh, 35, 40 bucks. New York Central. I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about on here, but we're just going to go like you can, so. Um, Rhode Island, Rock Island, Rock Island land, big old high funnel, I guess it would be. Spout? That's right. Okay. But still, this one is really cool. I think this one probably gets 35, 40 bucks. And they sell fast. Sell easy. This one's a big old kerosene can. Uh, West Virginia Lake Erie Railroad. And this one is Missouri Pacific again. Kerosene can. Super cool, super neat. Like I said, 10 bucks a piece on those. Can't go wrong. I really like them. Uh, Stanley uh, five and a half plane needs to be cleaned up, but it's a nice plane. This five and a half is what makes this thing more valuable than others. Paid five bucks for it. Uh, after you get cleaned up, it'll get somewhere around fifty probably. But two big old tubs full of uh, sockets, American-made sockets. Uh, there's all kinds of really cool ones in here. Um, some of them are aircraft sockets. I don't know if I can find one of those real quick or not. But. Anyways, bought two tough, two big old things for them. All American made sockets. I paid uh, 15 a bin for them. Just easy money. I got bunch of these uh, caution uh, pipeline signs. I got probably 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 15. 17 of them. Pay $20 for all 17. I got like a dollar a piece in these things. Easy $25 to $30 a piece. I paid uh, $10 for this little uh, beauty. It is a uh, kitchen or bathroom lamp and it's got brass all the way around. Real clean, real nice, not all pitted up. Uh, glass is solid. Um, I don't know, I, I do well with these. I think I'll get somewhere $50, $60 for that. 
And I bought this globe, acorn globe. Goes on a uh, finial lamp. So super cool, milk glass, no chips cracked, nothing like that. Probably 1890s, 1910, somewhere in there. Probably sat in a railroad station. Um, super cool. Paid uh, like five dollars for that, and I think I'll get sixty or seventy for that. Oh, uh, take you over here. We'll go right over here. There you go. I don't know if you can see that, but it is a drunken gnome cooler. Um, this thing is a Robinson pottery. I don't know if you know what that is, but they're made the same type of. Roseville or anything like that. Uh, blue, beautiful. Uh, I paid uh, $90 for that and I'll send that to an auction in uh, Dallas and I'm sure I'll get somewhere three, four hundred dollars for that thing. The last two I found online both sold in that, that range three, four hundred dollars. So that was a little pretty cool pickup. Um, I like these. These are easy, easy sells, easy ship. These beer can openers, they're all different kinds. We got uh, Valentine Ale beer. We've got uh, Southern, okay. Southern something beer. I don't know, I can't make it. Jack's beer, Jack's beer, New Orleans. Uh, that's easy, ten dollars. I sell those all day long. I find them quite often. Schlitz. This one's kind of a cool one. Taps, blue ribbon. Uh, tap a can, can opener. Uh, hams, another five, ten bucks. Grand prize, another Paps. This one's a Coca-Cola and Budweiser. So paid ten dollars for all those. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. So like fifty cents a piece. Easy money. I'll uh, you know I'll get fifty, fifty-five dollars when I get them for those. And then when I bought those. Same bag I bought with the same lot. I got all these nice or ice pick deals. Um, none of them are advertising. This one's a little bit different. I don't know. Kind of cool. But uh, some of these are at, you can find with advertising on them or better. But uh, be good for loose somewhere. And then I got uh, this Pan Am. Name badge. I don't know if you can see that. It's probably backwards on your screen. I don't know if backwards on mine. But uh, Pan Am, probably early 50s, something like that. Um, name badge. Super cool. I don't know if it's worth paying a buck for it. So. But that was cool. And then cap guns. Too good with cap guns. Uh, holster. These are. Uh, Texan Junior or yeah, Texan Juniors. Work, but uh, yeah, I paid uh, twenty-five bucks for the guns and the holster. I think I'll get somewhere seventy-five, eighty bucks probably for them. Um. I bought this big old. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, wall clock. It is um, reverse painted with a mallard and a duck on there. It's got the weight. It's got the pendulum. I just took it out so I wouldn't lose it. Um, super cool. Super nice. This is on uh, porcelain. I paid. Uh, I think 45 bucks for that. I'll take that out of the can. That's an easy 
fifty dollars for it, probably. Like that. Uh, what else we got? Oh yeah, I got a bunch of uh, bunch of these. I paid five dollars for a lot. Um, Amico thermometers, uh, new in the package, probably from the seventies. Kind of cool. Five dollars for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So like fifty cents a piece. I mean, no shit up. Ten, twenty, thirty dollars, something like that. Uh, fourteen karat gold Elgin pocket watch. Um, it says fourteen karat gold. I haven't tested it yet. I'll test it when I get home. But uh, it was missing the front bevel, so I don't really even care about that, but I'm just going to use it as a scrap. Got away at least an out of the past, something like that. So, paid 90 bucks for that. This is cool. This is one of the things that I like buying. This is an old dowry chest. I don't know if you read that on there. Um, Ohio, USA, Mount uh, East Liverpool, Ohio, and then it's got the girl's name, this is something, something. But back in the 20s, 30s, when you're, you'd get married, you'd uh, pick out the old hinges and stuff. Painted, real nice, got the brass flanges, it's super cool. Uh, but when you get married, you take this with you to your new house, you collect all your silverware, all the stuff you need for a family uh, up until the time that uh, you got married and then you take it off and go in. And I like the size of it, it's not super big, it's super, super huge, so uh, I can sell it on eBay. I paid uh, 30 bucks for it, I think I'll get, I don't know, right buyer, I think I'll get somewhere 120, 130 bucks for it. Oh, I forgot one water again. Uh, I don't see the inbox. I know it's on here because we're the one that got that, but another one on here. Cast iron wall brackets for shelf. I do real well with these on eBay. Easy to ship. Don't have to worry about stuff breaking. Uh, these are a little pretty or ornamental. I don't know if you can see that or not, but super cool. Somebody like those. I paid uh, four bucks, three bucks for them, something like that. I think I get thirty probably. Um, oh, this is cool. Have you go? All right, guys. Do you know what this is? Anybody out there? This is a pleater. So, um. For clothing, paper, whatever you want to do, it's marked uh, Maxent B and S Co. Chicago. The banner model. Um, I've seen these things sell 150, 200 dollars. Once I get it cleaned up, I think it'll. I think it'll go in that 150 dollar range somewhere in there. Uh, I haven't checked out the model, but most of these sell in that type of range. Heavy as hell, so uh, large flat rate box. But uh, I paid ten bucks for it, so I think it'll be good. Uh, copper oiling can for uh, you know tin man kind of deal, but uh, copper, super cool. Clean it up. I mean it's covered in grease, but it'll clean up. Look like brand new, and uh, I paid five for it. I think I think it'll be somewhere around thirty. And what else we got? Oh yeah, my boots. Got some old uh, Dan Post ostrich, Dan Post ostrich boots. In case, vintage, probably 1950s, 1960s. They're not in the best shape, but I paid two dollars for them, so I think I'm alright. This was uh, kind of cool. Look at what I'm crazy on this. I probably ought to check and make sure you guys can hear me before I go much further. I got 17 viewers, so I assume you can hear me, but let me go in here and check and make sure. So, 
Sorry about that, guys. One second. All right, well, I assume you can hear me. This was, uh, yeah, you can hear me. So here we go. Let's keep going. All right, this is super cool. It is old. Uh, hot. I mean, look inside there. I mean, look at the age, the oxidation on that wood. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And it is a cowhide. Blue to this. With rivets, brass rivets, and yeah, uh, I mean, just super cool. Old lock, got the key, super cool. But uh, I don't know, I paid $20 for it. Uh, I think this is something that could go crazy on eBay. Somebody might want that thing. So I don't know. Try to run it at an auction, see what it does. But I thought it was cool. I mean, it's got the CC maybe, um, but it's cool. All right. uh, what else on the table? Oh yeah, I got this uh, railroad lock. Uh, I got it. All right, here we go. I got this uh, railroad lock. This one is kind of a rare one. Um, they had a bunch of these. Most of them were not that. Cool or not that rare, but uh, this one is an M M Buck and Company, which is older than most. Um, has the key, it works most of the time. Yeah, there we go. And uh, just super cool, super neat. And I think this is a switching station lock, so I don't know. Cool. I think uh, I paid uh, 20 bucks for it. I think I'll get somewhere around 80 to 100. All right. What else we got? Oh yeah, this is cool here too. I know I'm saying that a lot, but I'll take this out to Canton. But uh, this is Ant. Probably if you look on there, the it's got the cross side. If you look on the side, all carved in there and. Uh, what they call it, East Lake. But you guys wouldn't think that this is what it is, but it's a shoe shine table. And take that, take that out, and inside it's, you can put all your, your stuff in there. Um, all, you know, all of what you're looking for, the oxidation on, on the handle. Just beautiful, really cool, really neat. And uh, uh, I think it's one of the neater pieces I got today, and I think uh, you know, even if I if I don't sell it at Canton, I think it's something that I could ship on eBay without too big of a problem. So I think it's neat, and uh, I paid forty bucks for it, and I think I'll get uh, more than that. All right, guys, any Jadeite fans in the house? Oh, this is a Jadeite ball. Pitcher, um, probably 1930s. Super cool. No chips, no cracks. Wonderful condition. Uh, this is the rare one. And this is the one everybody's looking for. This thing sells for $250, $300. I paid 40 bucks for it, and super excited to get it. Easy sell. Probably go to Japan. Most of these do. And uh, but just perfect condition. It's perfect. Alright. And then another piece of JA. This is what they call a cereal pitcher. For your milk in the morning, you just pour your cereal right in. This one's a fire king, but it's got the old fire king mark. Or it doesn't say oven proof or anything, it just says fire king. Doesn't say oven wear, oven proof, just says fire king. Uh, so that dates it closer to the 30s and 40s than it does the 70s or 80s, or excuse me, 40s or 50s, but uh, super cool, super awesome, I really like it, got a couple little scratches here on the side, but nothing too big, I paid $5 for it, I think I'll get 55 to 60 bucks. Uh, I got it. 
you guys know, I like, I don't know, I talked about it in another video, but this is Syracuse, China. And Syracuse, China did dishes for railroads, hotels, ships, boats, all that kind of stuff. And this motif, schooner, um, I only saw one on eBay. It didn't sell for like 30 bucks for a small one. So I got two of the small ones. And I got the big one. But uh, I'll probably bring them up some. I think I can get maybe 20 for these, 30 for this. So like 70 bucks. Say 10. I'll say that back to someone else. Because I don't know what it is. Maybe you guys can help me figure out what this thing is. So. But not this. This I know what this is. What's the next one? Alright. So I got an old photo album with a bunch of tin types in it. We got a guy there. This one's a kind of a cool picture. We got a lady with an umbrella. Parasol or whatever they call it. But I really only bought this whole album. I paid fifteen dollars for it. And I bought it. It's got a bunch of other pictures in it. Yeah. You know, people it's got cabinet cards with baby. But this one was one of the pictures I bought it for. Little boy, wagon, and a horse, or a horse, a dog. Um, this one's kind of funny. It says Charles Victor. The future president of the United States on the back. I don't remember having a Charles Victor as president, so I guess I don't look out for him. Uh, this one's kind of cool. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of faded pretty bad, but it's a band, a uh, marching band. Those be good, even faded like that. We got three little girls. We got another cabinet card, a little girl and a baby. We got the whole fam family here. Rusk, Texas, which is a little bitty town, so probably not too many photos from there. This one's from Farmersville, Texas. Baby christening dress. Cool little thing you got there. Look at that guy in his bow tie. He's probably a decker. Couple more here. Go to there. Baby. These babies sell for five ten bucks. But the picture I wanted I got another there's another one. We got little baby. But this is what I bought the house for. Was this tin type. And I doubt you're gonna be able to see it. But We've got two guys, I don't know if you can see that or not, probably not, but two guys there, and one guy's got his hand on the other guy's thigh, and the other guy's got this hand wrapped around the other guy's arm holding it, so I definitely think they're uh, happy to be together, but uh, I would call that gay interest, search gay interest tintypes on eBay, they'll be surprised, but I think that picture right there will go for 75, 80 bucks. Um, we got real photo postcard of baby. And then this one was cool too. Uh, San Angelo Bar in Mexico. And then it's uh, postmarked uh, 1901. And uh, super cool. I don't know what that is. In fact, some sort. We got a. We got a baby doing acrobat there. We got wife and husband, other wife and husband, and then this tin type is kind of cool, kind of a little bit of a gunslinger kind of guy. Kind of cool. I don't know. I like these old pictures. A couple more tin types there, but. Uh, I think I'll do good on that. All right, and now for the uh, the question for you guys. Maybe you guys can help me 
I bought this just because I've never seen anything like it before. And I couldn't see that any of these things survive. So, I'm trying to get the spring out here. I have no idea what it is. We've got this dirty, dirty barn glass. Glass. And then we've got some kind of cast iron. I think it's some kind of lamp hanger. Or something along those lines. Like something like you know, something like like that, probably. Yeah, yeah maybe this. I don't know. But super cool. I've never seen anything like it. Cast iron, so it's not like it's going to break the gold mine, but this part won't. But I have no idea what it is. I think it's, like I said, I think it's some kind of hanger or something. But this has got, like, a ring. i to break the glass. But um, it's got some kind of ring here for some kind of folder or something, I would think. So maybe it goes the other way. Maybe, maybe this. I don't know. Oh, maybe it's like that. That could be. Could be something like that, maybe. I don't know. But uh, it's cool. I don't see any marks on it, like cast marks where it has a name or anything. I have to clean it up a little bit better, but I, don't know. I definitely think that. Probably how that's supposed to go is like that. But that seems awful. Okay, weird. Maybe it's something like that. I don't know. But is anybody out there now? I don't. And I don't know. But I can't believe many of those class. This thing survived uh, too much out there in the wild. So I would think that it would have to be somewhat rare. Now the next question is, does somebody want it? I don't know that answer. But uh, I also got a couple other things. If you're on my Picking Live page, you saw the um, china cabinet I bought for my wife. Um, East Lake style oak, burr oak, uh, just a beautiful cabinet. It's got the old glass with the waves. And just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I think that's a thousand dollar china cabinet. I paid two hundred fifty bucks for it. I bought a um, marble top dresser with acorn pools. Um, just another beautiful piece. Big mirror and. Uh, Hanky drawers and the whole deal. Uh, paid a hundred dollars for that dresser. That's a steal. And I, what else did I get? Oh yeah, and I bought a uh, posted on my Twitter, picking live on Twitter. Um, this big wooden box deal that was uh, a tool, some kind of tool company crate that they shipped out tools in. And it's on casters. And it's going to make somebody a great coffee table. Pay $20 for that. I'll get a piece of glass, put on top of it, clean it up a little bit, and take it out Canton. I'll get two or 300 bucks for it. Yeah. But uh, that's what I got at uh, the auction today. Um, a little bit different than uh, garage sales, yard sales, and thrift stores that uh, I hit on a weekly basis. But this is where I started picking was antiques and collectibles and this type of stuff. This is what I love. The cool stuff, the different stuff, stuff that, you know, a lot of people I talk to when, you know, I'm talking to them or whatever and they ask me how I research this stuff and I say work points and they say, well, I don't see why work points valuable. I say, well, it's valuable because when you buy stuff that sells once a year or twice a year on eBay, you've got to 
worth point, the only place where you can get that data. So that's what I use. Um, my croc here, good find. I definitely think that that'll be good in another auction. This this auction today was terrible. The auctioneer was terrible. They uh, I should have spent more money. I should have bought more stuff, but I uh, I didn't. So if you guys have any questions for me here, let me switch over here and see if I can. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I can't see any questions. So. Let's see here. I see Mr. Sadie over here in the question, so I don't know how he's he's getting there. But anyways, um, that was the auction today. On uh, so I go back in tomorrow. Uh, a little bit more of the smalls and uh, stuff like that. They're selling tomorrow. Still got some furniture. I might try to pick up some of that. Um, bed. Rookwood vase that I pulled out of the box that I told you guys about on my Facebook page. Um, that thing ended up selling for 275 bucks. It was worth three, 350 probably. Um, they had these beautiful reverse painted lamps that I would like to have gotten that uh, went for what they're worth. Um, but then some of this stuff, you know, didn't come close to what it's worth. So, especially the furniture. I mean, I could have killed it on furniture. I just, I don't like uh, setting up at Canton and going out there and doing that type of stuff as much. I like, I don't mind going out there twice a year, but if I was going to be buying all that furniture, I'd definitely like to go out there next month and it's going to be. June, July, and it's going to be 125 degrees, and the last thing I want to do is sit out in the sun all day talking furniture. But uh, the stuff I got, as you can see, is stuff that uh, I can pretty much sell on eBay. Don't have to worry about breaking or anything other than the croc, which I already have a plan for, the clock. Probably the shoe shine stand, I probably can't sell that. Well, I probably could sell it on eBay, but I, think, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But everything else I got, I think I can sell pretty easily on eBay and uh, get top dollar for it. But uh, I enjoy this stuff, man. I enjoy buying this stuff. I probably enjoy it too much because if I had my choice, I wouldn't be talking gluten-free Rice Krispie treats on Amazon, I'd be buying this stuff and filling up my warehouse and having dealers come here and buy it. But I'm just not that sociable of a person to uh, make that plan work. So I keep doing what I do. But, uh, Sadie asks, how do you move your larger pieces? Flea market. Uh, yeah, I go out to Canton first Monday trades days, which is like the largest flea market in the state of Texas. Um, they have it every weekend before the first Monday. So like if Monday, like this, this month, um, Monday falls on the first, so that would be the first Monday. So Canton is this, this weekend, I believe. And then so on and so forth. Best time to go out there, I go out there in October. I go out there in March. I didn't go out there in March this year. We had too much stuff going on moving into the new shop. But, uh, yeah, I do well out there. I do good. And, I mean, that uh, that cabinet I bought for my house for my wife, I mean, I paid $200, $250 for that thing. I mean, that's a $1,000 cabinet. I mean, that's a beautiful cabinet, you know, just beautiful and just doesn't bring the money. And I know if I, if I wanted to, I could hit these auctions here and take it up north where there's a little bit more of an auction community where, you know, dealers are used to going to auctions to buy. Well, here you get 
flea market people that go to these auctions and they have a set price that they're willing to pay for a lot of this stuff so once it gets over that price I mean just like today it was me one other guy in the auctioneer bidding on most of that furniture and I could have bought a ton more and done well with it I mean there was a there was a beautiful East Lake bed and East Lake uh, end table uh, to there was another hutch china cabinet and a hall tree and I could have bought all that stuff and made good money on it but just figuring all that out and getting it all done isn't uh, something I have time to do right now I've got too much other stuff going on but there's money to be made everywhere I mean you can make money any way you want to make it you know make money on Amazon, you can make money on eBay selling little bitty things you can ship in the mail, you can make money at flea markets selling you know, great big things. Here are the antique booths, antique markets aren't as good. There's two towns here that are kind of antique, known for as antique towns, Jefferson and, and Gladewater, and then one a little further away in Mineola. And I thought about getting a booth there and setting up and selling some stuff, but uh, I just don't have, I guess I, I do have time, that's, that's a mistake, I shouldn't say I don't have time. I don't have the inclination to do that. So, And I go into these antique places and I check them out, because I mean once in a while there's stuff, I mean I, I know a lot about antiques and collectibles, I mean I know a ton about it. So once in a while I can go in there and steal some stuff, you know, get some stuff on bargain especially when silver prices go up I mean I hit antique booths like crazy with uh, I can hit antique booths like crazy um, and get silver because the dealers you know like two years ago when silver went up to like forty dollars an ounce forty two dollars an ounce or whatever I was going in there buying silver dollars for like twenty bucks because they hadn't Changed their prices in like two years, and when prices went up like crazy, I just bought it. But uh, I just see the same stuff sitting there. It's the whole point of that Mandarin conversation I had with myself. But I just see the same stuff sitting there, and I don't think these people are selling anything. And if I wanted to store stuff, I could store it here. I mean, I've got 5,000 square feet and another thousand out in the barn, but it's just I want to. I don't know. I've looked into going into Dallas and maybe setting up and doing an antique booth in Dallas somewhere. But again, Dallas isn't really antique. -y. I mean, mid-century modern, that type of stuff does well. But that stuff does well a lot of places. And anymore, you can't buy that stuff as well as you can buy antiques, true antiques. I mean, that that cabinet I bought today is probably 1910, 1920, and just beautiful and maybe 1930s outside but it's just gorgeous and if I took that cabinet up to Ohio or Michigan Indiana where that type of furniture is still popular where there's all those houses that are you know big Victorian homes and stuff like that I mean that stuff would sell for thousand twelve hundred dollars and you know I don't know, maybe, I, I don't know, that's something that I think I should look into. All right, we got uh, Louis the Seller. How long did it take you for your business to grow to need a warehouse? Um, we moved into our other warehouse about, we were there about 18 months, and we've been here about two, so 20 months ago. Um, I could have probably went into a warehouse sooner. Um, I can tell you what I experienced with my business. When I was selling out of my house, I would do just myself, taking pictures, and I had a room and part of my garage. And I could sell, I could sell uh, four to five thousand dollars a month out of my house and then as soon as I moved into the warehouse I mean the next month we did like nine grand 
still just myself, but just having more room and not worrying about is my wife going to kick me out of the house if I keep filling up her damn kitchen table with crap, you know. And so my business jumped up. So I think if I would have moved quicker, I would be further along now. But, uh, you know, that's here or there. Um, I, I started selling on eBay part-time seven years ago, eight years ago. No. I got married in 2005. So, yeah, eight years ago. And uh, did it part time just out of my house. And I would do a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month. But I had another job and I wasn't really worried about it. I was just the fun part of it, you know. I mean, the I can remember the first thing that I bought that I was like super surprised when it sold was I bought these Hallmark ornaments. Um, these merry miniature ornaments, and they were from the 70s, like uh, 77, 78, and it was just a bag full of ornaments. And I, it was the auctioneer lotted all this stuff up and uh, told me, or was asking for bids from people, and uh, I bid two dollars, and I ended up winning it. But the, what I wanted were these other Hallmark ornaments. There was a big box of Hallmark ornaments. And so I got home and I listed the Hallmark ornaments that I knew had value. And I sold one of them for like 80 bucks. And I didn't really have a clue what I was doing. I'd run everything in auction and uh, just see what happened because it wasn't, it was just cool, you know, see what happened. And I bought these ornaments, these little merry miniatures, and I listed them, every single little ornament. And they ended at like every five minutes on a Saturday evening and I had like a hundred of them. And I can remember me and my wife sitting in front of the computer and watching them go from like nine dollars to like eighty dollars in like the last forty five seconds of the auction. And we'd go to the next one and watch it go from eleven dollars to forty five dollars. And did this all night long. I mean for you know like an hour and a half, two hours. Like every three minutes we were ending another auction and it was just skyrocketing up, skyrocketing up, and uh, I mean, I ended up like six or seven hundred dollars off of the Hallmark Mary miniature ornaments. And so I started thinking, well, maybe this is something that I can do full time, and I had an unlimited supply of auctions. When I lived up north, I mean, I could go to an auction every day of the week if I wanted to, and I could buy as much stuff as I wanted, and I could fill up my, fill up my truck and come home and most of it would just sit in the garage and then I'd list it as we go. But I started seriously thinking about it and then I got sick. Um, I had real bad, they didn't know what it was, but it ended up being sleep apnea. And uh, so I, I'd wake up like every three minutes at night. So all day long I was just dead tired. And I went to do a sleep study and the doctor told me, that you're the worst we've ever had. They woke me up after an hour of sleeping and said that you woke up, you never got into REM sleep and you woke up every two minutes. And I didn't realize it. I thought I was sleeping. And uh, so I had to have surgery and have my tonsils and uh, my esophagus widened. And uh, so I could breathe when I slept. And uh, I was out of work for about two months um, healing from that or whatever. And when I healed, I had, or when I was sick, I had part-time, or you know, disability insurance or whatever for being sick. So I started looking at auctions a little bit more and going to auctions more. And by the time I was uh, done with my disability and ready to go back to work, I went back to work for about a month, and I said, "Yeah, this is pointless. I can make more money on eBay." And uh, I mean, I was a general manager of a car dealership. You know, I wasn't like some Yahoo, I was making good money, but I thought I could make more money. And obviously I didn't have to pay taxes, all that type of stuff. It was just a fun little thing and I, I could stay at home. My wife had a good job. We didn't really have too many concerns about where our next meal was coming from. So I left and started doing it full time. And you know, like I said, right away out of my house, I was doing you know four or $5,000 a month. 
And then we moved to Texas, and my whole life changed. Because in Michigan, I could go to auction every day of the week. I, could buy, I knew all about this type of stuff. You know, I knew about antique collectibles and this type of stuff. I didn't know any. I never walked into a Goodwill. I never walked into a thrift store. I didn't, you know, go to a garage sale. I go to a state sale, but I wouldn't go to garage sales. I didn't have a clue. So when I moved to Texas, there aren't any very many auctions. I mean, there's an auction maybe once every couple months in Texas. I mean, I go up to Arkansas and Louisiana and all over to hit auctions, but where I live within an easy driving distance, there's no auctions. So my whole life changed. I mean, everything that I did changed completely different. I mean, it was completely different. And I started having to figure out what I could buy and make money on that was at garage sales and estate sales and uh, thrift stores and, you know, figuring out that type of stuff. You know, my brain was wrapped around antiques and collectibles, and now I'm out buying, you know, video games or whatever. So I had to learn a whole new trade and set of what I was doing. And once I figured that out, we moved, I was like, we need to find a warehouse. And I started accumulating stuff that I knew I'd need, you know, the tables and computers and different stuff that I knew I'd need. I'd buy them as I'd see them, and I'd just stack them up in my garage. So when we moved into the warehouse, the shelving units, all that type of stuff, you know, I had all that stuff already done. And so we looked for a good four or five months before we found the warehouse we were in. And we went over there and met with the owner, an awesome guy, still a good friend of mine, and uh, ended up working out a deal. And we moved into the warehouse and hired a couple people to work part time. And we went from five, six thousand dollars being a good month to nine to ten thousand dollars being a good month, and a bad month being five or six thousand. And then I started running into a problem where I could, I had to be at the warehouse so much I couldn't go out and buy stuff. So I ended up, the people ended up quitting because people are lazy and don't like to work. And uh, so I just never hired anybody. So I just stayed in my warehouse. But I kept doing nine, ten thousand dollars a month because I would just, you know, keep adding stuff to inventory. I had started my brother in law started working for us and you know we just kind of figured it out. I kept doing nine, ten thousand dollars a month. And then I figured out Amazon and I had to go learn a whole new deal. You know, I had to go learn scanning freaking Walmarts and freaking Targets and looking for stuff to sell on Amazon. And uh, I mean if you go back and look at my older YouTube videos, I mean I got some YouTube videos on the Paul videos that I was like, what was I thinking? You know, what are you thinking? But I mean, all that stuff sold, but it's just like, it's not. That's not the stuff you want to buy. And uh, so I started figuring out Amazon, and then Christmas came along, and killed it during Christmas. Then I started thinking wholesale, and we got into some wholesale stuff right before Christmas, and that really took off during Christmas, and it's continued to take off. And you know, now we're doing. When we, we had so much room, and I mean, we had 1,400 square feet in my other warehouse, and I mean, we were bumping into each other. I mean, we had so much stuff going on, we were bumping into each other. So I came to an estate sale here at, that was held at this warehouse that I'm in now, and they had a sign out front that they were selling it. So I called Olivia and I said, this place is kind of odd. It's not really exactly what I would want, but I think it's perfect for what we need. And she called them and uh, it was an owner, sell, sell by owner deal. And uh, we'd already talked to our bank and had all that lined out. We were just looking for the right property. And this one, the people came down on their price to where we wanted it to be. And... Uh, we got it all worked out, and I mean, we were in here in 30 days. I mean, we closed, and we're in here in 30 days. But now we've been here about two months, and I mean, it's just amazing the amount of business we're doing. And I don't see it being, I don't see us hitting a ceiling. You know what I'm saying? I, I just, I think we can keep going, 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 and it's all about finding those systems. You know, like 
like I talk about all the time, finding systems to list and finding systems to package and you know all that type of stuff so that you can do the volume. I mean, if, if I couldn't do volume, I wouldn't go out to an auction and buy all this stuff because if I was a one-man operation, it would take me literally four or five days to list everything I got here and maybe not that long because some of this stuff is big so it's not really but to clean it up and prep it and get it all ready to go and take the pictures and list it and everything you know probably got a good couple three days into it but now that I've got people who work for me you know I bring it in here to drop it off I got a guy who comes in they'll clean it all up make it all look pretty and then the girls will take it and they'll take pictures and do all that type of stuff. And then I come in and uh, fill out my little sheets. I got these, I don't know, I got them over there, but I got these sheets that I fill out. And basically, I put what title I want on the listing, you know, keywords, all that type of stuff. And then I find what category I want to put it in because that's something that takes time when you're learning and you don't have a whole lot of knowledge on eBay or anything like that. And, uh, so I find the category I want it in, and I figure out the price that I want to sell it at, and how I want to sell it. If I want to sell it at auction, if I want to sell it at fixed price, and I fill out that little card on everything. It takes me about, you know, a couple minutes to do each one, and I just fill it out. And then the girls take that card, take the pictures, and list it. Put a description. I mean, I've got templates set up, so they just go in and look at it, say anything that's wrong with it, you know, measure it, weigh it, do all that type of stuff, and put it on on eBay and all this stuff will be listed by the time I'm by the time we close on Monday and you know that's how you get to a point where a warehouse is important if you, if, you know if you're a one man operation and you don't have those kind of aspirations then that's probably not important to you but that's a long meandering answer to your question there Louis and I appreciate it but uh, that's my life story in a nutshell I guess uh, hey Sherry, how are you doing? Good to see you on here. Uh, Mr. Sadie, have you considered an actual storefront? Well, Mr. Sadie, I have considered a storefront, but I don't like people that much, you know? I mean, I like this where I don't have you in front of me and telling me crap that, you know, if you put a question here that I don't like, I can just ignore it. I don't have to, I don't have to talk to you. But if some idiot comes into the shop and wants to freaking cherry pick or you know, need, you know pick at everything and oh this has got a scratch on it or this is this way or that's that way you know I don't like dealing with that crap I don't like dealing with people and you know maybe it's social anxiety disorder or something like that but uh, I don't know I just don't really like dealing with people and. So now you know all about me. I don't like people and all that type of stuff. But if anybody else has got a question, please leave it over here. If not, I'm going to call it a night and head home. I've got a big day in front of me tomorrow, another full day at the auction house. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it's a little bit rambling and kind of just shooting shit here, but I like my finds. I think I did good today. I think I got some cool stuff, different stuff. You know, it's not stuff you're going to find at Goodwill. It's not stuff you're going to find at garage sales, but it's cool stuff. And this stuff sells too. And this stuff sells for more than a lot of the garage sale stuff. And when you can find those cherry hidden deals, you know, like this croc over here, I mean, I know I talked to you about it a couple times, but this croc is freaking awesome. The drunken gnome croc, really? Come on now, that is a cool croc. And, you know, I paid good money for it. I mean, I would, you know, you wouldn't go into a Goodwill expecting to pay $90 for me, but, you know, I knew what it was. You know, I, I've seen this before. I've studied it, you know, I've seen it sell at other auction houses and different stuff like that so I know you know and I just love this stuff I mean this is the stuff that I like if there was enough money in selling um, antiques and collectibles where I'm at and I could open an antique shop 
and just have people work for me and run the shop and I could just fill it up and I could sell enough to support my family and support my lifestyle, then I would do it. But I don't think there is. Not in my area. I'm sure there are in other areas. I mean, if I lived up where Ronnie lives, uh, you know, in you know, Martha's Vineyard or something like that, then hell yeah. But I don't. And I don't plan on moving and I don't plan on driving up there to sell it. So. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys very much. Again, if you guys haven't already, please go over to my Facebook page, Picking Live. It's the only time I'm going to hawk something to you today. Picking Live over on Facebook, and uh, I post stuff over there all the time. Check out that cool, awesome um, china cabinet I bought today. That's pictures of it over there. On uh, my Twitter, Picking Live, there's pictures of a bunch of this stuff that I bought today and I will be doing live updates on Twitter again tomorrow when I buy stuff so if you want to keep up with going, what's going on with me check me out on Twitter at Picking Live or Facebook at Picking Live and again guys thanks a lot and I'll see you next time thanks